So what is priming for people that are watching this that perhaps don't know? Right. Priming is a relatively short period, which lasts about 14 days for most people, whereby what you do is you increase your intake of food about three times over from what you're currently eating day by day, three times. The way to do it is you have to have multiple meals. You can't get it all down in one, obviously. And possibly, you know, poking in one or two snacks in between could be helpful as well in getting enough volume in. The only caveats are that what you poke in must be either the muscle meat or associated fat of preferably large ruminant animals or butter or dairy or eggs, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the idea is to take in vastly more nutrient than your body requires. And in so doing, what happens is it causes an um, a hormonal system reset, which sets your body back on a path of um, everything being good in terms of the way it's designed to work. And as such, inflammation falls off your body, excess fluid, weight falls off your body, excess fat melts off your body. Um, your body will thereafter return to a more natural, genetically predetermined shape and size. Then your average bloke, your average person, don't have to be a bloke, you might be a woman. Or maybe you're a small yellow teddy bear or an attack helicopter, I don't know, whatever. Hmm. Uh, but basically that's how it works, is that you overeat grossly, vastly and hugely for about two weeks, during which time you may gain weight, or you may stay the same weight, or you may even lose weight actually during that period, I did. And then you go back to a, a standard baseline, one meal a day after your two weeks of priming. Um, and what we generally find is that people tend to become unburdened with fat and inflammation naturally as a, as a consequence of that. We believe the mechanism is hormonal, largely. Certainly it's nothing to do with so-called heat units or calories or energy content. That's also, you know, a way of completely debunking the calories in, calories out argument once again. Um, but that's basically what it is. It's overeating by three times over for two weeks every day without fail. A lot of people think that's good. Yeah. That's awesome. I can overeat. Love it. No, it's it's torturous. It's horrible. It's not pleasant remotely. It's really, really a nasty thing to do. But it's good. Yeah, I, I did it for three days prior to my surgery, and I, I lasted three days. But I'm, I'm a bodybuilder. I'm a bit um, over the top about everything I do, and I I couldn't last longer than three days doing that. So it kind of tells you how tough it is. Um, I say beyond maybe the first day, you get a bit fed up with it. Um, yeah, your stomach feels full. So yeah, and on that note, what are the what are some of the cons of it? Obviously, you can gain fat. You can yeah. you know feel horrible. Is there any kind of biological response that maybe isn't beneficial? Well, again, you might also find that you might get a, a gastric upset. You might get the shits because you've had so much fat, and you weren't you didn't really build up to it. It was one of those sudden changes things. Um. It's very unlikely that there's any serious problem that you could do by overeating fat and protein in terms of it's not going to sort of kill you suddenly somehow or anything like that. There's no real risk that I'm aware of, any above crossing the road or whatever. It seems pretty pretty normal stuff. Um, yeah, it's just that unpleasantness, I think, is the main downside and the potential that some people – gain weight on priming and if you're trying desperately not to gain weight and you do priming and gain a bit it might be very very upsetting for you but if you didn't mm. understand that that was preparatory to probably getting back to a, a better body composition naturally after that because your hormones have reset yeah yeah i see mm. no i know you said that you've you've done it in the past before you achieved some good success but you lost a significant amount of fat doing it yeah um would, now, would you do it again for any reason? And is it yep. a case-by-case -case kind of thing where yep. only if sort of thing? Yeah, if I felt I needed to reset my hormonal system again because it had got off whack again somehow by me not adhering 
for you know everything that's good and light because I'm a hedonist and a human being. Um, that would going to be the major thing. If I if I put a bit on of, of fat on or something and I became a bit inflamed or whatever, and I wanted to do something about it quickly, I might use priming as my methodology. Maybe. Mm. Yeah. It's it's a similar kind of um, method to reverse dieting that a lot of people that you know compete in bodybuilding and trying to do mm. reverse dieting is more focused on doing it over a longer period of time incrementally. This is more like. Okay, guys, this is a system reset. This is to shock your body to get to respond. Um, do you notice any parallels within priming and reverse dieting at all? Or is it like a different kind of thing? I don't, I don't know. I have, I've never really thought about re reverse dieting. It's not something that I've spent a lot of time hanging around or listening to the people who are talking about it. Um, the only reason I came across priming at all was because I was asked to do it by Raymond, whose idea it was. Um, in order to be a guinea pig publicly, really, to see what happened in my case, and so that we could sort of advertise the whole thing to his people and to our people in one. Um, mm. I probably wouldn't have thought of it myself. Yeah. Yeah, reverse dieting is a strange one. Um, the idea is that people, typically what's said is you you diet in reverse, so you incrementally increase your food intake in response to your competition, your lowest body fat mm. level, whatever it happens to be. Mm. That amounts to the same amount of time that it's taking you to get to that you know, lower body fat level. Um, but what I've noticed myself is people can actually reverse diet a lot quicker. So say someone is dieting for a competition in physique, maybe 12 to 16 weeks. I noticed people can get their metabolic rate back to normal, um, the hormone status back to normal, their libido is better, bowel movements are more more fine, digestion is better, mood's better, within about four to six weeks. And that's in all cases, even people that have um, apparently given themselves metabolic damage. But it's a kind of different focus. It's more tactical. It's not, you know, eat everything that you can sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but it's, you can achieve the same thing. I mean, I think people that do long-term diets, maybe I'm talking like 14, 16 weeks plus mm. for a competition or just, just for weight loss, they... They find the benefit of having like a, a mini diet break in the middle of like a week. So I sometimes get people to do that as well. Yeah. It's good for their brain as well. So yeah. I don't yeah. know if you've had much experience with that where you've not really. actually increased the, the food intake. Yeah, not really. As I say, I've, I've done priming myself properly once. And whether I would ever repeat it or not, don't know. I probably would, um, but I would need a reason to. Mm. Yeah. I've also never prescribed Brilliant. to people to go weeks and weeks and weeks on a restricted eating pattern in terms of the volume of food being consumed. So it's, you know, I, there's never been a need for me to say to my people, oh, and you can have a week off and eat as much as you like here for reverse dieting because I've never actually promoted dieting. So reverse dieting, yeah, same deal. I see what you mean, yeah. So, I mean, if someone is looking to get very, very, very lean, um, Obviously, you want to do that with the most simplest approach, the most healthiest, the most, the least amount of stress, basically. Mm. Um, how would you go about doing that? I know you say a lot about, like, if the average person say, yeah. um, you reduce body fat by, you know, eating to your hunger signals, things like that, eating proper food. Yeah. But when someone's trying to get very lean, obviously, there's different things you can use. But do you, at that point, start tracking food more, or is it more relaxed approach yes it really depends on how i might deal with the client as to what the exact reason is reason is that they tell me they want to be very lean because very lean if we mean at the extreme end of very low body fat carriage is not necessarily healthy or indicated and i might have to be mm. encouraging that client along those lines that this is not a good idea depending on who they are and what they're trying to achieve if we do determine mm. that getting very lean is what we need to do for whatever reason, then obviously, you know, the tools are known for that. But my first concern is with that client is, should you do that? I know that's not yeah. really an answer. Yeah, the, the asking, yeah, the question always has to be asked. I think a lot of people try to achieve these things, but I know myself it's not sustainable and definitely not a healthy thing to do, so... That makes sense. Cool. 
Brilliant. Excellent. Great. I'm glad that we could put the world to rights nice and nice and quick. Yeah. Build muscle and lose fat on the carnivore diet.